oh, hello. <laughs> Very professional. I mean, we are though. Yeah. So, hello and welcome. This is Storyboards with me. I'm Sammy. I'm EJ. And we're here just to kind of do some some storyboard basics, you know, and give you just some storyboard stuff. That's what we're here to do today. Who here knows what a storyboard is? Yeah. Good job. Good job. Yes. So basically, oh, yeah, that's hit the, nice the thingy. Line. Yeah. All right. So a storyboard is literally just a sequence of drawings with directions and dialogues for shots. So you take your script, you break it apart, and you draw the shots from it. You decide what kind of look you're going for, mm -hmm. what things you want to include visually, and then you draw them to illustrate your, your little... It's like comics, but less exciting sometimes. It is, it is. It's a lot like comics. The difference between comics and storyboards, though, would also have to be um, when you do a storyboard, you add camera movement, too. So you want to show the exact direction of where the camera is going to be facing and how the sequence is going to unfold. They are in the back. <laughs> we Val's got two. Up, right? Oh, three. Val's switching. Hot, hot diggity dog. We have three cameras. We have three cameras. Three. We're super legit. Whoa. Too legit to quit. Woo. All right. Um. Yes. So why do you need a storyboard, Sammy? Well, let me tell you, EJ, <laughs> Vanna White. Uh, why we need a storyboard is because sometimes shots are a little too complicated. Um, and usually when you have a script, you break it down into what's called a shot list. So the shot list will have everything from the camera direction, the actors on scene, everything breaking down that specific sequence into how it's going to be shot. Then, if there's something a little complicated, then you would draw it out. And you exactly, because then it makes it a little bit easier to understand. Shot lists and storyboards are just communication tools to like either talk to a director or a director of photography or anyone who's working with you. You just kind of slide it on over them to them, and they look at it and go, "Oh, that's what you want." Yeah, because sometimes it's a little hard when you have an idea in your head and you're talking to like your crew or the people that you're working with to be like, hey, this is what I want. And they'll be like, I cannot read minds. I don't know what you're talking about. And so this is the best formatting tool, you could say, to be able to create it visually so they can understand and actually follow the directions you want to give. Let's look at some examples. Oh, I think there might be, yeah random crap. You can skip forward too. It's probably English. Yeah, we can't read. So. <laughs> <laughs> they don't teach reading at film school. No. They just teach you how to hold a camera and not shake it, which most of us don't it's called do a, properly. It's a stick. You put it on a stick. On a stick? He did. Which you can do. Yeah. This is an elementary school. You can color outside of the lines. And actually, it's kind of recommended with storyboards because it's easier to um, show the camera movement. Nice, <laughs> Troy. 10 out of 10. God, I wish we had an audience cam right now. I know, right? That slurp was, like, solid. <clears throat> yes. So what's this slide? Oh, this is just showing that uh, storyboards don't have to be very detailed. Some people, uh, like mine, usually end up with just stick figures just to kind of show if there's like a complicated camera movement. Um, for one scene I did, it was a long shot um, around a table and it was a constant movement for about three minutes. And so for that, I did a little bit of a storyboard to kind of de demonstrate how far the camera would be and the direction it would be going. Um, and those were with stick figures, because uh, I went to film school, I cannot draw. Well, technically, it wasn't art school. I mean, it wasn't art school, but I only took film classes, so well. I can't draw. <laughs> so. And then this was just kind of describing something we already talked about, the differences. The shot list versus yep. storyboard. Exactly, and kind of what you would use a shot list for. Um, and storyboards are usually a secondary thing. A lot of people don't use them. Uh, usually some of the, the examples that we have that we're gonna show are much more major motion pictures because they're usually involving action or very intricate movements that need to be recorded in a very yeah. specific way. 
like if there's a really complicated action sequence, like someone runs from this area to this area and you wanna include every little bit, writing like close up of foot is like not helpful sometimes. Yeah, exactly. It's it's so much easier to visualize it with a drawing to be like, oh, this is exactly how close we want it to be or be as similarly close to this as we can get. Yes. Next slide. Okay, yep, this is a video. So this is just some examples. Lower BB. The oh, am I on that screen? Oh. Yeah. There you go. So uh, I, we have um, three films that we're showing examples from, just to kind of give you an idea of storyboards. This one is from Jurassic Park. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a. Uh, it was <laughs> it, a small it, indie. Film yeah, it was in an 80s, indie flick. 90s? It was only it was 90s. only shown at um, the uh, Cannes Film Festival, I think. Um, it was the best movie of its time. Where is my mouse? There it's go. right there. It disappeared. Spoiler alert, the goat died. What? you think he's going? When you gotta go, you gotta go. Yeah, pardon you. Um, the really um, nice thing about looking at storyboards, or at least the important thing, not the nice thing, is you can see the arrows. So the arrows are usually either for motion or camera movement. And so you'll notice that the arrows in the actual shots are for the movement of the specific character, whereas the arrows on the outside of the um, sequence, those arrows are specifically for camera movement. And that's what a lot of people do with storyboards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should I go to the next one? Yeah, part? just go to the next one. Because oh. it's, it's the mummy, and I think it's a little, it's like a couple minutes. Yeah, so this one's the mummy. Um, and what's really interesting about um, this storyboard is it's a little bit closer to an animatic, and I'll show you an animatic, we'll show you an animatic in a moment. Um, so this follows it a little more cut, and we'll talk about the differences between those. Yes, this is a computer animated image, um, but what's uh, really cool is the storyboards still match the image, so they drew it even though it was fake, they drew it as if it was real to make it easier for the animators and the team to film correctly.
So that was that. Oh, God. I'm starting over. Ah, ah. Just go to the next slide. Okay. So usually a step after a storyboard, when you make a storyboard, if you're doing a sequence like that, is you'd make what's called an animatic. And an animatic is basically the exact same thing as a storyboard, except it's timed precisely to the scene. So this animatic shows the exact sequence of the scene in real time. Not, not right Good click. Thing. When the destiny of a great fortune is at stake, men's greed spreads like a poison in the bloodstream. Uncles, nephews, cousins, in-laws of increasingly tenuous connection, the old woman's most distant relations had come foraging out of the woodwork. At the head of this congregation, it was a disorienting coincidence, we discovered our own Deputy Kovacs, himself an important attorney, of course. He was the executor of the dead widow's estate. This is Madame D's last will and testament. It consists of a general tontine drawn up before the event of her husband's death 46 years ago. In combination with 635 amendments, notations, corrections, and letters of wishes executed during these subsequent decades. The ultimate legality of this accumulation requires further analysis, but in the opinion of this office, it was Madame D's intention that control of the vast bulk of her estate should be transferred forthwith to her son, Dimitri, with special allowances for his sisters, Marguerite, Laetitia, and Carolina, and minor gifts for various members of the extended family as shown in the list of recipients, which I will elucidate in due course. However, an additional codicil delivered into my possession by post only this morning and by all indications sent by Madame D during the last hours of her life contains an amendment to the original certificate, which as prescribed by law, I will read to you now. The authenticity of this document has not yet been confirmed by the presiding magistrate, so I ask that all parties be patient and refrain from comment until such time as our investigations can be completed. To my esteemed friend who comforted me in my later years and brought sunshine into the life of an old woman who thought that she would never be happy again, Monsieur Gustav H., I bequeath, bestow, and devise, free of all taxation, and with full and absolute fiduciary entitlement, the painting known as Boy with Apple. Wow. By Johannes van Heutel. I can't believe it. The Younger. What? Which gave us both so much pleasure. The van Heutel? Tax free? Who's Gustav H.? I'm afraid that's me, darling. That fucking faggot! He's a concierge! What are you doing here? I've come to pay my respects to a great woman whom I loved. This man is an intruder in my home. It's not yours yet, Dimitri. Only when probate is granted and the deed of entitlement is You're given. You're not getting boy with apple, you goddamn little fruit. I need to change you if you want. How's that supposed to make me feel? I just wanted to show an example. However, that sucks for PG-13. Yeah. That was our F-bomb. We can't. No more F-bombs for us. No more f bombs. I did not realize that was in. The, do you know? You know, sometimes when you watch something and you just phase it out because you're you're so uh, used to it. Yeah, did not. 
Well, anyways, that was an animatic. <laughs> um, and animatics are used when you want to make sure the timing and everything is right in a scene. Because yeah. that was a really complicated setup. That was a really complicated and it, setup. It would probably be very difficult to. Um, that should have been the Budapest. marigold. Oh, whoa, never mind. I don't remember. Don't know. It is in my presentation, but I like it because of the animatic. I can't remember. It's not the. Is it the Grand Budapest Hotel? The Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah. That's what it was. I yeah, the it. Grand Budapest Hotel. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's yes, a Wes Anderson. Definitely. Yep. And I, I feel like he uses storyboards a lot. He does. Because he does a lot of intense setups like that with big groups of people and all that. And yeah. that was probably produced just to communicate to the people on set that like this is what we're making and this is how many shots we need so exactly settle in exactly yep. yeah well you know his films they deserve it they do sometimes um so we have if anyone is interested we have some scripts and storyboards here if you want to try it if you've never done it before um, and in storyboards, if you're doing it at home, really simple, uh, just a square, like that's it. Um, sometimes when I do complex storyboards, I will actually use note cards instead of, um, yeah, I'll use note cards to do it scene by scene, so then I can just put them in order and um, put them out. Um, but you can do anything from multiple squares on a page to lots of them. Um, just to help keep the movement. I made a, my own custom when I had Photoshop. I made my own custom storyboard sheet, which is like just six 16 by nine squares on the page. And so I can move them around as I need to and make some bigger so I can put more detail in, some smaller. Mm -hmm. And you can just kind of freestyle it. Yep. And if you want, you can just Google a storyboard template and stuff will pop up because storyboarding can be really valuable to film. So a lot of people have shared their storyboards, their ideas on the use of them and all that on the interwebs. God, the internet, what would we do without it? We would, you and I would cry. Yeah, we would have literally no job. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, in a payphone. Yep. That's true, that's true, that's wow. true. But without the internet, we wouldn't have the beautiful storyboards. <laughs> yep, <laughs> well, well, not, not the, uh, uh, actually, I don't know if Star Trek used storyboards. Some TV shows do use them, but a lot don't. Because it's just so fast. That and because they'll switch directors. So fun, yeah. fun fact about a lot of television shows is they don't use the, sometimes the same director every week, they'll have multiple people come and direct different episodes. Actually, I think there is a storyboard app for your smartphone. It's also super useful to do it digitally because you can send mm -hmm. it to everybody and they can reference yep. it. Yep. There used to be um, a famous editor who, when he would do it, he would um, use like actual images and create them through physical images versus, uh, I don't remember his name. Okay. I, it's been a long, a long day. But you know what makes better? Storyboards. Storyboards. <laughs> Storyboards. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah. I, was gonna, I was gonna say one more thing, animation. There are actually different storyboards for animators and for animating. Um, they usually, the um, boards are much tighter and closer together. Uh, since animation is much more uh, continual and fluid, um, especially if it's 2D and you're hand drawing it. You can use the actual storyboards. To help continue your, it. Yeah. Flipbooks, yeah. It's uh, some, yeah, flipbooks are uh, a good one. That's what storyboards are, essentially, is spread out flipbooks. Yeah, a flipbook minus like 16 seconds. And also the staples. Yep. Oh, yeah, Steamboat Willie. Yep. Yep. I can't whistle, but I would whistle it. Well, probably not royalty free. Yeah, it's not royalty free. So we would just be like, <gasps> yeah, and then it would be like, <laughs> and we're done. Disney comes and bleeps us out to the tune <laughs> of Steamboat Willie. The bleeps. Yes, that is true. 
that's true. So yeah, any questions on storyboarding? Any thoughts? Comments? Concerns? Because you're supposed to pin it up on a board on the wall. Oh, no, actually there is, there is a reason. Oh, yes. I do actually have the um, script for Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, and uh, we don't have his storyboard, but um, when you read the script, for example, let me grab it. <clears throat> Would you like me to read it and you draw it? Of course it is. Yeah, do you want to read it? Are there are sides. There, yeah, well, here are the sides. Um, yeah. So this is the classic, I got one. So this is the classic boiler scene. So if anyone has not seen Nightmare on Elm Street originally, the original A, you should. Uh, it's, it's too scary? It's not, it's not um, that scary. You know the clip from The Mummy that we just watched? Yeah, that spooked me, so. Oh, EJ, my <laughs> little, my little, my little sunflower. Um, don't. EJ will probably punch you in the face by accident if you try to scare them on Halloween. Or maybe die. Yeah, or a little bit of both. So, for example, in the script, we start interior classroom day, fade up on an English teacher in class, Nancy among the kids trying to concentrate. Yo. Are you not on page one? 43, interior classroom day. So basically, ah, the teacher yes. is reading Shakespeare. And so, EJ, if you just kind of reading this, um, so it's a teacher in the top of a classroom. Yes. How would you storyboard that? I would probably include a wide shot of the class. Mm-hmm. Yep. Illustrate, you know, just a wider, including all the kids. And then maybe a, a shot of the teacher. Maybe a tracking shot backwards as they illustrate, they, you know, as teachers do, move. That's true. Teachers do yes. move. Especially yes. high school teachers. Yes, they do. <laughs> and so to draw that out, you would have a person in the front, and then you would draw an arrow showing the... That the camera's moving backwards. Yep. So the arrow would point towards... The viewer of the drawing. looking at the paper. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That is true. And if you wanted to do something, so we'll go to a darker part of the scene. Um, so the third page, the top number um, 48. Um, so if you go towards um, the middle 49, so angle um, is on so some scripts usually don't have camera movements in them. In but some, this is this looks like a shooting script. Yeah, this was a shooting script. So this one has the exact angle. So the storyboard would be so it's angle on back on Nancy. She slips from her seat. I wearily on the teacher in the class, but no one turns as she disappears through the doorway. So at this point in the scene, um, just a little premise. She's already asleep and she doesn't realize that she's asleep and she sees her deceased friend um, standing, Tina standing in the doorway, ushering her out. And so to do this storyboard, um, you would do most likely a close up on Nancy. So you would draw closer on her face and you'd usually write like ECU, extreme close up. Of Nancy. Doing, of Nancy. Yep. Noticing and Tina. Exactly. And then you would have arrows usually showing if the camera was moving in or out. So I would draw uh, Nancy um, more um, medium shot, so from about the waist up. And then I would have it so that the camera tracked into uh, an extreme close up. So then you would just draw that with arrows. So you could do that in one single frame to show that movement. And then um, you could track her standing up which would be the next storyboard. Um, and from there, you can then do the opposite shot of her leaving the room. So you would do one storyboard of the camera coming in on her face, 
So from like a medium to a close up. And then um, I would do a second storyboard of her standing up and then the camera following her up. So I would have to draw the camera movement, I would have to draw uh, her body movement, and I would have to draw, um, I would also draw how the scene shifted. So from maybe an extreme close up to a medium close up, back that out, and then go from there. Does that sound yes. okay ish? Yeah, there would also be arrows, lots and lots of yes. arrows in that yeah, second Yeah, lots one. of arrows, because if um, I wanted to show the movement, but I didn't have like a shot list to say the movement, I would use the arrows to be like, this is where we would start, continue up, and then the next one would be her walking out. Yeah, comics. Yeah. Comics, yeah, comics, but with lots of arrows and screen direction. Yeah. So what comics do that storybo stor storyboards don't is they like imply movement, and like your brain fills it in. So in storyboards, you would draw the arrows and you're like telling people like, yes, you're supposed to, this is what's gonna happen. So that's yeah. pretty much, the, other the than really a lot difference. of artistic things. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> cause you'll, that's basically the difference. Some of the, um, the examples that we showed, those are um, illustrators who specifically only make storyboards. So they're paid to do high detailed storyboards. Um, most of the time, especially if you're doing them yourself at home, uh, they usually, unless you spend a lot of time on them, won't look like that, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with a storyboard being detailed or not as detailed when it comes to the character. Yeah, it's, it's just a tool. Yeah, it's a tool just to help describe the movement to your, um, to your crew, your camera operator, your cinematographer. Actors. Actors, yep. Those are really uh, great for actors, especially in a scene that's really complicated. So for a major film like Titanic, they would do a lot of storyboards to show the movement of all the characters so the actors knew, especially because they had a couple hundred people on a film like that, they would use a storyboard to show them where they needed to be and the direction they wanted them to go. When to. And when to go, yes. Because a lot of the chaos that feels very chaotic is very controlled it, chaos. Yeah, timed yeah. to the second. Yes, exactly. Oh, James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron times all of that out. So, yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to end these. Well, and it's interesting. Hey. Oh, thank you. Because story storyboards are um, a tool that are not is not hard to create. It just feels complicated if you've never done it before. Yeah. Yeah. Or don't know how to draw, which some of us, we, we don't know how to draw, but we do it anyways because it helps. Yes. Well, I was going to say that sometimes doing a storyboard is just more work and you don't need to do it. Mm -hmm. Like if, it, if you can articulate through your shot list what you need to, you don't need to draw a storyboard. Yeah. It's it's just a minimizing of um, explaining you need to do in the moment. Is yeah. That's all. Yeah, storyboards and animatics are really important for um, a lot of, like we say, action movements, things where maybe the shot list was not very descriptive. And so you would do a storyboard and maybe even as they did for the Grand Budapest Hotel, um, you would do uh, an animatic because that better tells the crew and everybody exactly what needs to happen. So then in a way you end up spending maybe less time on set because you've already worked all of this through and you've already in a way trained your brain to know exactly what to do when to do it. Do you have a question yeah, or a say comment? Something. Okay.
Yeah. So for the live streamers who didn't hear any of that, sorry. Um, no, I should have given good. you a microphone. Um, uh, what Brittany said was mm-hmm. basically details sometimes are important or sometimes aren't. Just don't get bogged down in the details yeah. when making a storyboard. Because the, the whole point of a storyboard is for direction and not for detail unless the detail is yes. important to the direction. Yes. Yes. Wow. That was a l- if this, then that. If this, then that. Yes. Welcome back to high school. Wow. Uh, I'm going to teach you some philosophy and ethics right here. If this, then that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think I think that was it. I, I can't think of anything else to add yeah. unless um, the magician behind the curtain has something that they would like us to add. The great and powerful right. Val says the, no. the, Yeah, the great and powerful Oz was like, nah, y'all good. So, so oh, that door is that fun. was a loud sound. All right. Um, yeah, I think I don't think there's anything more to add. Storyboards are simple. I think if you've never done one, try it. Find an example script online. So like this script, the shooting script, I just Googled Nightmare on Elm Street and it popped up. There's a lot of scripts online for famous movies, so you can yeah. give it a go at home. They release all the scripts for Best Picture for Oscars every year. Mm-hmm. You can read them. And you can read them and enjoy them because actually, I think that's a really key thing if you're a director or a script writer or anyone in media is read someone else's script. Um, and learn how to communicate it. Exactly, because everyone's script is very different and unique, and I think that that's a really important thing to do if that's something that you're interested in, is to become a writer or director. Um, read, just read a random script, give it a try, read a couple, and just let the uh, writing and the styles just kind of infuse in your brain. Don't steal it, though. Yeah, no, uh, copyright is a thing, um, and copyright law, uh, especially for a script like Nightmare on Elm Street, would be a pretty big chunk of change. That's also a very different Tim talk that we're... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a different Tim talk. We're not doing that Tim talk today. Yeah, so... But you never know. We could do a a copyright Tim talk. Val, you can cut us off whenever. (laughs) Yes, so thank you for stopping by and watching or listening, and uh, tune in next time, our next Tim talk. Do we have a next time? I mean, hopefully. Okay. If, if Val found this funnily, funnily enough, funny enough, wow, words, <laughs> maybe we can do another uh, Tim Talk. Tim Talk. Yeah. What does Tim stand for? Um, telecommunicating funnily hyphenated in media. Oh, oh. I think we just we came up with a uh, Tim Talk. Holy crap. Val, are you still doing this? Oh, oh my gosh. Jesus. She's still um, doing so this. So www.forfunsigpodcast.com. <laughs> Just name drop. So uh, if you like us, we have yeah, a podcast. If you think we're funny and you'd like to give us a listen, we do have a podcast, www.forfunsigpodcast.com. I've commandeered com. this Tim talk. Well, you know, Val said we could uh, sponsor it, so I think we should we should sponsor it. And I think we should do more Tim talks if uh, Val's into it. I like, I like being Tim. I like <laughs> participating in the talk. I hope you guys enjoyed us being Tim. Learned something. Watched something. Holy Ooh, crap. That's another good one. Mind blown. Mind blown. <sighs> All right. I'm um, going to make a logo then. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to make a logo. Um, cop- <laughs> yeah. Copyright name public. Well, it's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, um, God. Also, random note, you can actually copyright your storyboards yes, if you you're interested in that. Um, that'll be our next Tim talk. Copyright? Copyright. Cool. I don't yeah. know. I don't know anything. We'll have to make a disclaimer that's well, like Well, I'll I can help you with it. I know I know copyright law. So, I got you. All right. Uh, that's that's what I studied. When you want to be a producer, you study the copyright law. Gotcha. Oh, are we done? Yay, we're done. Yay. Yay!